I feel like I know this game enough that we can do this in a single stream. Kind of like Pikmin 1. This game is longer than Pikmin 1, but I think we'll be fine. But if not, we'll do it today and tomorrow. But I think it'll just take a single day. So when talking about difficulty, I, I think we mentioned this. That normal, we could beat the game faster on normal. But ultra spicy is, you know, the more difficult challenge. And it'd be testing myself. I'm actually more curious about just doing it on normal and seeing how fast we can do it. Rather than doing it on ultra spicy. I mean, I guess we could split the difference and do hard. Because that gives us still 100 Pikmin. But it does make the enemies a little harder, you know. I guess let's just split the diff. Oh yeah, and this At is one of the few Nintendo games to have voice space acting. lies a planet on the brink of ruin. The planet's name? Kopai. Due to a booming population, booming appetites, and a basic lack of planning, Kopai's inhabitants have all but exhausted their food supply. Their only hope is to find another planet with edible matter. Accordingly, they send unmanned scout vessels called sparrows out into space. To their dismay, the search is proving fruitless. Just as they're about to give up, Final vessel reports back with news of a miraculous discovery. They mobilize to investigate the planet, which they name PNF 404. Kopai's last hope rests on three intrepid explorers. Explorer's 279,000 light year voyage nears its end. But as they initiate the landing sequence, something goes horribly wrong. Charlie. I managed to escape unscathed, but what are the rest of my crew? They could be anywhere on PNF 404. I've got to find Alf and Brittany. I only hope they survive. Scare them away with my whistles. Stay back. I'm surrounded. Get away from me. They don't appear to be hostile. Oh, look at how beautiful this game is. We gotta look at the water. Some of the best water phys some of the best water in a Nintendo game. What are these? They look dangerous. And now we're with Elf. So if it wasn't super obvious already, in this new game, we're not playing as Olimar. What was that? You know, the Pikmin remain the same, but some things have changed. It appears that the specimen is just spotted company. And what's stuck in that branch? So we have we have lock on again, finally. Ah, oh, I've missed lock on. I like the lock on. I know some people prefer um Swarm, but no, I like lock on and rush better. It's just me. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I started off with three. 
Nevertheless, the red fellows seem quite pleased that their thing has been freed. And we got our red Pikmin. Now I should say, even though I have a timer, this is not a speed run. Creatures propagate, how fascinating. So yeah, we have a timer here, but this ain't no speed run. I ain't no speed runner. Even though, out of all the games, I think Pikmin 3 would be an interesting game to speed run. But that's just straight up not what we're doing. Incoming transmission, who could it be? Alf, it's me, Brittany. Did you copy? Thank goodness. You're with the Drake, right? I made it through the landing in one piece. Though, thing is, I'm trapped somewhere. And I'm starving. Oh no, we gotta cut off. I wonder how far Brittany is. But at the very least, I'm thankful she appeared to be safe and sound. So I guess I I did not know this. People really hate Alf. In fact, people seemingly hate all three of these crew, the new crew members. I I think they're fine. I don't get why people hate Alf so much. Like I I kind of understand why people hate Louie, even though I think Louie is really funny. Honestly, he's kind of an idiot, but that's what you love about him. But no, I guess people really hate Alf, and they don't like Brittany or Charlie either. I think they're fine, and I like the idea of doing different protagonists. Uh, what is that thing? So, this, even though this looks like the Lesser Spotted Jelly Flute, this is not a Lesser Spotted Jelly Flute. It's called a Medusal Slurker? I think that's the name. And when we defeat it, it drops Rock Pikmin. Are these creatures Pikmin too? They're giving me a funny look. Do they want me to break it? So Rock Pikmin are the new type of Pikmin in this game. Are one of the new types. And yeah, they can be thrown at crystals to break them. And we get the Rock Pikmin onion. So the onion was trapped inside that crystal. Since I have two types of Pikmin, you can now select which one I want to use with L and R. This is maybe my, this is maybe the best quality of life feature in the game. The fact that I can now, you know, choose which Pikmin type I want to throw by pressing L and R is so convenient. Because before I had to be holding the Pikmin in my hand, and only then. Could I actually do anything with it? And oh my god, it sucked. Analyzing recovery. Analysis complete. Get ready for some of the best liquid physics in video games. Oh, it looks amazing. Large quantities of Pictanium U detected. This is a seed bearing fruit making cultivating on Kopai possible. Juice from this fruit is safe for consumption by crew members. Can't tell you how happy it is to get out of this place. I'm so sick of sleeping outside and I'm super hungry. What's with your entourage there? Once you say they're called Pikmin, they're cute. But we don't have time for that cuteness right now. Look over there, Alfie. Let's work together and nab that huge piece of fruit. So one of the things we can now do is throw our captains. Take it from here, press Y. Split into two squads. So we press Y and we go over to Brittany. And now she can throw those. So we can switch between our captains and on right on the radar, align with your destination, and select go here with A to start moving. How strange it is to have such a data file. We should try it as soon as we can. So yeah, now in this new game, we can divide and conquer. And it's super convenient. So here we have Wally Wogs. And the difference with Wally Wogs in this game. So they still work exactly the same. But one of the properties of Rock Pikmin 
is that they're immune to uh, being crushed, right? Like, you can't crush them, so as a result, Rock Pikmin are immune to Wallywogs. So Wallywogs no longer matter. They're no longer a threat. Okay, so we're going to be cutting this close. So, on hard difficulty, the amount... So, in the original, I want to say the amount of time in a day is... I want to say 18 minutes on normal difficulty. 12 on hard? Maybe it's 13 on hard. And then, like, 12 on normal. I know there is a difference. There's a difference in the amount of time you can spend on each day. But we should be fine. So here we have the first boss of Pikmin 3. I don't remember what it's called. So we throw it's got like this crystalline shell that we throw Pikmin at. And then we just lay into it with reds, and it'll be dead in like two cycles. This thing dies really quickly. Okay, we're missing one Pikmin somewhere. But it's dead. Yeah, you can kill this thing really quick. And it drops a few things phone, a uh, volt fruit, and yeah. See, even though Nokia survives the apocalypse, is this? Maybe. Oh, shit. We're gonna cut this close. I have done, I have done this on one day so many times. Nah, they're not gonna make it. Fuck. Come on. Okay, so when a... So, I know there was a lot of guys somewhere's weird there. But if a... If the Pikmin are in, like, a loading zone, it does not count them. It counts them as safe. So I don't think we lose any... I think we only lose a single Pikmin to Sunset. No! No! Shit, they must have gone out of the loading zone at the last minute. Okay, we lost... Honestly, an awful... Day 2 or whatever. Not getting the cell phone back in time. Losing the body of the thing. I have done that in one day. So many times before. Analyzing recovered item. Analysis complete. An ancient communication device used on this planet. It's a data glutton. But no, I love that it's an Nokia. It contains technology unknown to Kopai and is emitting a signal even now. If I integrate this device into the Drake's communication system, I should be able to boost our signal strength. Look like it's going to be an all-nighter for me. Yeah, it's interesting that, right, these creatures have discovered intergalactic travel, but yet they're still somehow, right, they still find, like, a Nokia to be a pinnacle of technology. There is a photo function in this game. We just haven't used it. So as we come here to the distant Chandra, Brittany gets separated. Yellow Pikmin. What are these Pikmin doing? So we are not on the time limit at the moment. But yeah, you can now complete electricity circuits that create light bulbs. It's one of the new things added to this game to, you know, give more for yellow Pikmin to do.
Yeah, no, if I was doing a speed run, I definitely would have restarted. I completely blew day one. Or, you know, the day where we first get Brittany. Phew, it's good to be outside again. I'm getting claustrophobic in that cave. Yes, a streak. Okay, so we need to give Brittany some reds and some yellows. And, or yeah, and then in exchange, they'll just give us all these others. So that's a bearded amp rat. It, it's an electric enemy. That does kill Pikmin. Can be kind of dangerous. Cross this bridge over here. <laughs> and this. Which breaks that open. And yeah, we need both cap we needed both captains to do that. So, yeah, the next part we'll do tomorrow, but I at least want to start working on this. Right, Isn't this? I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before, but where? I need to get this analyzed and back to the drink. Maybe it'll come back to me there. Where are we missing, guys? Oh! Shit! Oh no, we're gonna lose a bunch of guys. Oh my gosh, I... I forgot about those guys! Nope, we just lost a bunch. I knew we had a bunch back at the base. Nope. Okay, you know... I'm... I'm trying to play fast here. And as a result, because I don't know what I'm doing... I'm playing very sloppy. The one thing I will say that Swarm is probably better for is, um... Nectar. And look at that. That's the Behemoth Thought Bat. What's going on here? Copad radar detects a signal of life. It doesn't look like the captain. I mean, not unless he's really let himself go. Alright, let's go chase after that behemoth boss battle. I guess we can get yeah. So, the Behemoth Fossbat does use poison. It hurts. Now we got that done. It's already on a quarter health, so it's already taken out the butt level damage. This is, I think, the largest electricity thing in the game. It requires 20. But it does the big bulb. Which is a long stun. That is enough to kill him. And that's the Behemoth Foss Bat. We lost, what, two guys? That's not bad. And we found Charlie! I, I do I ha I think I have all the achievements. Oh no, I can check real quick. Uh, yeah, I do have all the achievements. I think the last one I got 
was um, this one. Because I'd never played the game two-player before. And I still really haven't. It's just like, you know, I cheated the achievement. But other than that, I've done everything else. Okay, when we come back here, we have to remember to get this first thing first. Because it's right there. And we just ran out of time. Ah, so close. So close to doing everything I wanted. So yeah, I got, so when Mario Kart 8 originally released on the Wii U, because the Wii U wasn't selling well, Nintendo did a promotion where you buy Mario Kart 8 and you could get one other game for free. And it, the games were like Wario Land, Nintendo Land, Pikmin 3, and I want to say there was like two other things. And I chose Pikmin 3, because I had Nintendo Land, the Wario game didn't seem that interesting. So I was like, yeah, I'll just pick up Pikmin 3. And that's how, so that's how I got Pikmin 3, which was my first game in the series. And then I borrowed a copy of 1 and 2 from a friend, and the rest is history. Now, I love that they put the thing straight on, even though straight on is the path of the cannon beetle. Come on, give me... Give me Brittany... Uh, there's another place where we can get bomb rods. I don't think I can, but we'll try. Ah, uh, we definitely can't get that back in time. Alright, let's get these bomb rocks. And let's use it to blow up this bridge over, or this wall over here. So that way, first thing tomorrow, we can get back those grapes. And we can get back anything else we need. Yeah. God, 25. Because the, the juice mechanic in this game, I think, is interesting. Because I like Pikmin's 1's 30-day limit. I think that's a very interesting idea. And then Pikmin 2 just doesn't have a limit. So in theory, I think Pikmin's 3 idea of, depending on how good you are, you can set your own limit. But then it's too you get too much juice too fast. I've beaten this game with like, I want to say the first time I ever beat this game, I had like 69 juice. Alright, now let's do this. I don't think we need to throw across all of our yellows, just some of them. And thank god I don't want to mess throwing up our captains. I have screwed that up, this this part up so many times over the years. But I think we just need to get 20 guys to push down this bag. Okay, so I know we see that off to the sides, but um... If I remember correctly, what you want to do is you want to get all your guys up on this. Yep, mirror slug time. Last time I did this, I remember having a perfect run of the mirror slug. That's not going to happen this time. But last time my mirror slug run was perfect. Ah, oh, I was so proud. The Mirror Slug has set health intervals like the Scornet Maestro. I don't think so, but I don't remember. So. 
Honestly, the Muldoons are scarier than you. Yeah. The Muldoons are scarier than that thing. And there's the Mirror Slug. Okay. There's the Avocado. I hate this little bridge right here. I always have such... I lose so many Pikmin to it. Just fall and knock aside. We got lucky that time, but we're also only traveling with like eight guys. I think that's the last thing we need to get. Or at least the last thing we can get. Because the rest of them have taken the watermelon back. Oh, well, there was this guy. But, you know, we'll worry about that next time. And let's start working on the bridge. Oh, whatever. It's the pink onion. Get over there and cut it free. Now, I know there's a... Gl in the original, there was a glitch to get up there faster. But I don't think that's in the Switch version. Let's go kill Tuffy Wuffy. Tuffy Wuffy Doodle all the day. There we go. So I was like, I knew Wax killed it. And we got a pink Pikmin, a winged Pikmin. Oh, look at it. I find the winged Pikmin adorable. You have freed it from a new type of Pikmin. This is the first Pikmin I've seen flying. Well, winged Pikmin are technically not the most OP Pikmin. You know, their rocks just destroy them in every facet. I'll be honest. I think winged Pikmin are my favorite. I think they're adorable. And now, tomorrow, we can go to the next part of the river. That'll probably be the, yeah, the first thing we need to do. Oh gosh! No! No! My rocks! Um, isn't the... It's up here, isn't it? This is one of the few things I always forget about in this game. Is the um, metal suit Z or whatever thing is over here? Okay, well we're probably not gonna fight the guy, even though we have definitely unlocked it. We can fight a different boss. So that's the Scorch Guard. I always forget that's there. Like that's like I know this game pretty well. That's one of the few things I always forget about. Wait, did we never... You guys stay here with this. I don't think we ever opened this up. No, we didn't. <laughs> oh, that's rather inconvenient. That's definitely wasted some time when, with those guys collecting those ultra spicy berries. We're still missing six. Okay, it's those those ones over there. That, they're probably not going to get back in time. No, they aren't. I don't care about the corpse. Ah, shit. Okay, we lost three of them. And our juice is officially beyond the screen. 
I know we dropped the fruit into the water. Yeah. You know, something I do think I like about this game is how it spaces out getting each Pikmin. Because, like, by this point in... Well, by this point in 3, we had almost beaten the game, admittedly. Yeah, by this point in 3, we had basically almost beaten the game. Or, by this point in 1, I mean. You'd already beaten the game. But I like how, right, you get reds and then almost immediately get rocks. But then there's a little bit of time before you get yellows. Then, right, you go to the next... Then you spend some time without getting a new one. And then you get pinks. And we, like, still... We're over halfway through and we haven't gotten blues. Like, I don't... I, you get blues before you even get to the halfway point in both of the previous games. So I think that's interesting. I like that about Foley. Oh, hey, look! It's Louie, that fucker. Ruiner of all things good. Eater of carrots. I think this is a really cool boss fight. I love the idea... Like, I love the idea that in every Pikmin game, there's an enemy that can turn your Pikmin against you. The Puffman in the first game, the, um... whistle-blowing thing in the second game, and now this thing. Or this thing that uses its army of Pikmin. I think that's really neat. Kill it. Now, this thing has fixed health. We can only do a quarter at a time. Which does kind of suck. So what you gotta do is you gotta basically make a clearing. Or else they take all your Pikmin! Shit, usually I'm faster with that. I screwed that up. Alright, just kill it. It's got like no health left. There we go. That's the longest I've ever taken on the Squirt and Maestro. Probably not, but it's... I've done it faster before. What? Captain Olimar? He's not moving. We need to get him to the Drake as soon as possible to make sure he's okay. The next morning. What was that noise? Where did that ground come from? Why aren't we in the air? I can't even take a quick snooze without something going haywire. This is bad. Olimar's disappeared. And your rubber ducky has also gone AWOL, Captain. What did you say? It's even worse than that. He's run off with our juice. That villainous pig. We need to hunt him down. That's why I called him that fucker. Because, yep, Louie takes all of our stuff. I don't know. Blues are always the butt of the joke. They're always the ones being killed. And it's because they have mouths. That makes them the most expressive. New type of Pikmin sprouted from the onion. That was in water. This Pikmin seems to be right at home underwater. So, yeah, as we come down here into the water... You can see blues can now swim, and it's just so much nicer. Because now, like, enemies like that, that new, this new enemy whose name I can't remember, and even things like the Wally 
Uh, the Wally. Oh god, what are they? They're called Wogpoles. They can now chase down the Wogpoles, whereas before they were just kind of running around like idiots. We do have new enemies, though. We have uh, the Puckering Blenno, which are actually kind of deadly. Like, if you leave them unchecked, they can kill plenty of Pikmin. The final onion should join together. Having all the Pikmin in one onion is just so nice. It's so convenient. And I'm so glad they're doing it. Like, I think it's visually... Like, okay, I like the design of the new onion. But I think it's more visually interesting in the first game to have... Or the first two games to have the three onions. Like, that looks better. But just the convenience of one onion is so nice. So here we have the... Hermit Crawman, I think it's called. So we had the smaller version in the previous game. And that version does also exist in this game. We didn't see it in the list for a while. I'm forgetting all the area's names. The only one I remember is the distant one. But usually, as long as you break its eyes, it'll flip over before it can actually attack. This is actually a very easy boss. I'm just going to Alright, so here we have one of my favorite enemies, the Peckish Aristocrat. So it's a crab, it has a glass claw that you do have to be careful of, but you can break it using rocks. Now, once you do break it, this thing doesn't become completely harmless, but it becomes a lot easier. It, yeah, it can shoot bubbles. And it drops an avocado. But yeah, I think in the previous game, I would think those bubbles would kill. But surprisingly, they don't. So we have this weird island. And you can see you can throw rocks at it. The rocks keep banging on it. And then... got an eye. And look at this thing. So this is the Myerclops. It is the largest boss in any Pikmin game. It is also probably one of the hardest bosses in any Pikmin game. At least that's always been my take on it. This thing has kicked my ass so many times. So it knocks out, it, right, it stomps in the mud. And then what you gotta do is then, right, you gotta break this crystal still. But you see it does that, like it starts spinning. This has got a massive fuck off tongue. Yeah, I think, I think this is, maybe, not, this is both the hardest boss in the game, but I also think it might be the hardest boss of any Pikmin game. I have probably lost more things to this than the, well, okay, not boss fight Water Wraith. Boss fight Water Wraith, I've only lost, like, I don't know, a few. But this thing, yeah, boss fight Water Wraith, this thing has killed more than that. This thing has killed more than the final boss of Pikmin 2 for me. I've lost entire squads on this thing. The fucking Myerclop sucks. Come on. Alright, we beat the Myerclops, we're totally out of time to bring everything back from it. <sighs> Such a pain in the ass of a boss. Because it drops this giant cantaloupe, 
And it drops Louie. We're not bringing it back. We're definitely not getting the cantaloupe back either. Oh, we're not getting any of this back. Oh, shit. Okay. I guess we'll come back and we'll fully save Louie tomorrow. Um, since we've got a second, I do want to point out this. This is the ship from Pikmin 2. Yep, you can find the crashed ship from Pikmin 2 here. It has been destroyed. I do not remember the ship's name. It's not that the dolphin is the ship in the first game. I don't remember what the ship in the second game is called, but that's where it's been destroyed. So this is basically confirmed as yes, this is a sequel to 2. Unlike Pikmin 4, which seems to be a reboot of the franchise. As much as I've gotten in arguments on TikTok about that. Analyzing. Analysis complete. Food thief. <laughs> Subject spacesuit has activated for sleep mode again. Uh, being its possession 30, 45 supplies of juice and a toy suitable for a toddler. I swear there's some way. There we go. That saves us one puzzle. So it turns out this Captain Olimar, this isn't Captain Olimar at all, but rather some fellow named Louis. And I suppose that our fuselage we saw must have been the remains of Olimar and Louis' ship. Seems like that huge monster really did a number on it though. Food. Is that really all you think about? Didn't we just feed you? Oh, it's great to be reunited with my rubber ducky. With him by my side, I feel like I can achieve anything. Um, is anyone listening to me? Louie, don't have our cosmic drive key. We need to find it if he knows where the real Olimar is. Food. Very on brand for Louie. God, we do gotta go back and beat Pikmin 2 now. Fuck. Fuck. there we go, all of Earth. I do, so yeah, the Pikmin, if it wasn't obvious, the Pikmin PNF 404, which I love the name PNF 404, because it literally means planet not found, and then 404 is the error message for page not found on computers, so that's fun in games. But it's Earth, right? You can see, you can kind of make out South America. I want to say what I called North America earlier is actually Asia, and then you can see Australia and Antarctica at the bottom. Right? So that's Australia, that's Antarctica, that's South America, and I think that's Asia? And, like, parts of North America or parts of North America up there. I don't know. It all makes sense in the grand scheme of things, if you really look at it. Because that, it, it, basically, the map, the world map in this game is what is predicted will happen to Earth over the next, like, millions of years. Because, you know, continental drift and all that, and how at one point we were a Pangea. Well, eventually, you know, continents are still moving, and eventually it's going to look like that. Oh, fuck me. So here we have this body bulb orb. It's um really strong. This has to be it. Oh my god, they're getting stuck on the eggs. Okay, so wings are really good at fighting this thing's second phase. But when it comes to the first phase, they're fucking stupid. Alright, so now we use wings.
Fuck. Nope, we ran out of time for that. And you guys aren't done with this? Oops, oops, oops. Fuck. That was not what... I, I hate that it automatically puts you back in the formidable oak. Shit. And we'll head back to the last area, which we've got like nine fruit, so that's at least another two days. Because we do have to fight BD. We're going to have to fight the hairy long legs again. And we're going to have to fight the calcified crush black. So that's two more bosses. Alright, let's just end the day. Uh, we can go get the peach. I know that's another thing we can do in that area. Okay, let me think. Let me think. Because, okay. So, we need to go fight the Crash of Crush Black. That's 20 blues. We need to go fight the Harry whatever. I'm probably going to use Reds to do that, just because Reds do more damage. We need to go fight a Peckish Aristocrat to get the banana. That's probably also 15 to 20 blues. Um... We need to... Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Oh, thank God. They do grab that. This is our one time using candy pop buds in the game. Um, I don't remember if we. What, what are the Rock Pikmin candy pop buds called? I don't honestly know. Yeah, sure enough. So weirdly enough, this is the only place where you actually fight this guy. Like, even though it's actually, like, it's a unique boss that, you know, first appeared in this game, it's weak to rocks, you really only fight it here and in the challenge. And I find that kind of interesting. It's not a very hard enemy. Mind you, I like it literally just has a soft attack that can't kill rocks. So, as long as you're using rocks on it, God, I hope there are three bomb rocks in here. I don't know why, you know, every all the walls need three bomb rocks to break. I don't know why opening the dark mounds only gives you two. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Oh my god, I I thought they would take it the other way! You know, there's that other thing right there. You would think that if any Pikmin would go the other way. Because that was closer. The other way was closer. I don't know why the fuck they took the long way. Those idiots. God, Pikmins are stupid. Okay, so here again... We have the hairy long legs. An idiot Charlie. Alright, now let's go over to Brittany. And easy enough. It was still a pain in the ass. But it was easy. We've recovered every bit of fruit from all accessible areas. 
We now just need to find the cosmic drive key while we still have some juice supplies remaining. Oh wow, we have so limited days to do it. Oh, it's Captain Olimar. Captain Olimar, he's out cold. And what's that thing doing to him? I have no idea. We need to talk to him, though. Let's hurry and bring Olimar back to the... Drake. Did you see that? The thing ate Olimar, but maybe we can save him. So this is the Plasm Raid. Plasm Raid. The next in the long line of Pikmin enemies that, you know, are these weird, like, otherworldly... Um... Creatures. So every Pikmin game has a Wraith in it. Alright, so that's what we're running away from. Now, the trick, as I remember, is just to leave, the, leave this thing in circles. You just want to make this thing circle itself so much that, you know, it can't really do anything. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Usually, Brittany's faster with the warnings. Where's Charlie? Oh, he's with us? So you got candy pop buds in case you need anything. We only lost a single red pick. Everything else we kept. Alright, there we go. There's the final trial. Again, not my most efficient. I could have gotten those bomb rocks. There's stuff I could have done. But we made it. And that's all that matters. Now, one time... I, I did a run one time of this game where I could only use one type of Pikmin per day. And I want to say I beat the final trial with nothing but reds. I want to say, yeah, I used nothing. I had reds carry Olimar. I had reds, you know getting all the pieces i want to say yeah i just used reds and that worked and then of course i beat the plasma wraith with nothing but reds which was a pain in the ass because did we oh we left a rock behind we left a single rock yeah i, I do really even though we just sped through it i do really like the final trial i think it's an interesting puzzle and I like that it requires you to use all your different types of Pikmin. I like that in the... Because usually it takes you... I, I'm going to say three days. I want to say the first time I ever did it, it took me three days. Because, well, I didn't know what I was doing. But it's nice that it... Right, like, oh, you can create shortcuts. Like, there's... That, right at the very start, there's a shortcut you can create. For, like, oh, on the second or third day, you can go back to that shortcut. And you can even try to use that shortcut to skip stuff. Like, you can go get the bomb rocks, go back, and then just use the shortcut. And it does kind of work. So here we have the giant plasm wraith. But, um... There's nothing we can do for you. All of them are. And here we go. And it's still only taken us about a third of the time that it took to beat Pikmin 2. Because Pikmin 2 took forever. Alright, I only like using one captain here. The other two captains get in the way. Or you accidentally throw them. That tends to be the bigger thing, is you accidentally throw them. So as you fight it, it like drops this weird goo. And the goo you don't want to go after the plasm rate. You want to go after the goo. The 
goo is what matters. This is also, I think, I honestly do think this is the best boss fight in any Pikmin game. Because kind of like the Titan Dweebo, it uses every type of Pikmin, but I feel like it's much better at using every type of Pikmin than the Titan Dweebo. So, like, it'll spawn these, like, obstacles here. And there are elemental obstacles that you then break with the Pikmin of that element. So here, right, we used reds. Yeah, this is such a great final boss. That really does maximize everything Pikmin does so well. Um, I think this is the electric one. I think the electric one's the coolest one. Because it uses both yellow Pikmin's immunity to electricity and also their ability to throw them higher. Uh, technic so technically there's no flying Pikmin one, but right, it can like, the thing itself can fly up in the air. There we go! We only lost probably half of our Pikmin. I mean, we didn't lose any of the rocks. Because that thing can't kill rocks. But the Plasma Wraith is dead. And it slinks off into whatever ungodly dimension it came from. There we go, all Mar saved. Phew, that was harrowing. I can't thank you enough for saving me. I am Olimar, captain of the SS Dolphin. Pleased to meet you. I see you have rescued my colleague Louis as well. I hope he didn't abscond with any of your food. He has a habit of doing that. Actually, that's exactly what he did. Well, two apologies for that. Thank you for rescuing me. Please take this. The cosmic drive key? Now we can get back to Kopai. Phew, what a relief. This must be fake, Captain Alamar. Hokitate is on our way home, so why don't we give you a lift? I'd appreciate it. My own ship is sadly out of commission. Food. Food, food. Ah, what are we going to do about you? Look at the Pikmin! Do you think this is... Do you think they sense that this is goodbye? And the Plasm Wraith is still alive. We couldn't have done all this without those little guys. We owe them so much. Farewell, my comrades. And so the intrepid explorers successfully complete their mission. After securing a bountiful supply of edible matter and learning the valuable lessons of planning and teamwork, the explorers are set to become the saviors of their home planet. Under their guidance, the seeds they've recovered will be used to kick off a sustainable cycle of cultivation and harvesting, thus bringing new life to Kopai. However, one question remains. What was the cause of the accident that sent the SS Drake hurtling to PNF 404 surface? Perhaps it wasn't an accident after all. So that is one of the weird things about this game is that it ends with that sort of like cliffhanger tease that there is something mysterious on Earth that causes the SS Drake to crash. But when you look back on the previous two games, maybe it's also true there as well. Because, I mean, Olmar hits a meteor in the first game. Or an asteroid or whatever. But that might be... That might have something to do with it. Same thing with... Um, in the second game. There's like... The ship crashes... Mul hits multiple things. So maybe there is some... There's like some sort of mysterious force on Earth that causes ships to crash. And my hope, I would usually say like, oh, I hope the next game addresses that. But based on the demo for Pikmin 4, it looks like that's exactly what we're doing. Because all of our ships crash, 
the rescue team's ship crashed. But also, we're finding out all these other people's ships crashed as well? So that's really interesting. It's like... Because, again, Pikmin does take place on post-apocalyptic Earth. So there's something on post-apocalyptic Earth that causes ships to crash into it. God, this is such a great game. I enjoy this game so much. I had such a great time playing it again. I mean, it's only been like two or three months since the last time I played it. But, I, God, I love Pikmin so much. All three of these games are fantastic. I've been, I have been waiting months. Because I said we were going to do this on stream when Pikmin 4 was announced. I was like, oh yeah, we're going to play all three Pikmin games on stream. So I've just been patiently waiting till July of this year to play all three games on, on stream. I was originally going to play them on the Wii because those were the only copies I had. But Nintendo releasing all three, uh, two in one and two on Switch was fantastic. So it was, we were easily able to play those again. And then we were able to play three here. My favorite. And yes, Pikmin 3 is my favorite still. Besides for that one cliffhanger line, I do feel like this is a good end to the story. You saved your planet, you rescued Louie and Olimar. I think it all kind of works out. 